when mom died, I realized I was repeating her silent destiny. I was living a life of quiet desperation. Bam! Cancer diagnosis. Somebody says to you, you're going to die in two months. You say, wait a minute, I have a potential. Don't let them put you in a cookie cutter protocol. Don't let them treat you as if you're another piece of meat. Susceptible to mutation is the key point. This is really uh, the anti-cancer diet. And in fact, it's the anti-cardiovascular disease diet. It's the anti-diabetes diet. It's the anti-chronic illnesses of the West diet. So which genes are expressed is regulated by, by epigenetic factors. How their social environment influences those genes turning on and turning off. So this is the first post-genomic era, you might say. What happens early in life could dictate how the immune system works forever. Living in a, in a state of, of fear um, or living um, with an overall high amount of psychological stress um, can also uh, activate your inflammatory response. The loneliness affects the genes that control immune function. We all need each other. Chronic stress can literally get right into the tumor microenvironment and stimulate uh, aspects of, of our biology that make our body more hospitable to cancer and to cancer growth. And the only way to get around that is to go back and heal the childhood wounds. What is the underlying, um, usually psychological or psychosocial spiritual factor that is actually leading to the physical symptoms. That is incontrovertible now in the scientific literature that happiness is associated with improved physical health. With breast cancer, 19 of 24 recent studies show that if you're depressed, your prognosis is worse. As now some of the textbooks say, the well-known phenomenon of innervation uh, of lymphoid organs and the influence of the brain on the immune system. The tremendous amount of neuroscience research showing that mindfulness changes the brain's basic structure and function. Strategies in which we can engage that transform our mind and therefore change our brain will be ones that can also influence our bodies. Cancer is a turning point. Only if you decide to turn. I don't recommend that anybody get cancer, but it's been the best thing that ever happened to me. Mindfulness is ultimately going to be the key. That our mind engages in activities that turn on our genes. Survival cannot be taught, but it can be learned. Part of the beauty of being human is that we were designed to be able to grow through adversity. At least 50% of the cancer could be wiped off this planet if people made appropriate lifestyle choices. We really need a radical revolution mm -hmm. in terms of health care. Maybe we've suffered enough. I don't know. I hope so. There are these powers and potentials within us that have yet to be fully understood, that science is only beginning to grapple with. That this is kind of the wave of the future. And instead of having a pharmacologic intervention, or chemotherapy intervention for cancer. Maybe we can learn to change our own signaling mechanisms. Now starts a symphony, good music with yourself. The miracle is we don't have to do nothing. It's going to happen all by itself if we interpret our mind-body signals correctly. And whether you're a firefighter or in the military or a teacher or a congressman, uh, you 
have that capacity for awareness. And so cultivating that uh, more is essential, I think, to us really thriving in the 21st century as opposed to just struggling to get by. You get up and you do something, yeah. I think the time is now. It's really now.